Call my mama. We think he's dead. My mama had a heart attack. Yeah, you know what I mean? So you couldn't even figure out how the fuck I just got out of this. Bro, I, I knew. <laughs> I'm, I've been connected to God my whole life, but I've just been ignorant and not with it. I've been connected to my mother, my father. I'm connected. I knew, you know, back in the day when I was a child. I'm connected, but I didn't know how connected I was. I didn't know really he loved me, you know what I mean? Until I started seeing things like this. There was another time before that that he showed me that he was really right there for me, that he saved my life too. You know what I mean? But but when that, when that happened, I, said, I, I, I remember looking up, talking to him like, dude, how you get me out of that? I'm not, man, how, how, first of all, the first part is, how you get me out of, how you, how you get Mark to punch me in my chest and tell me not to go where he went? This is where I'm finna be for 10 hours, in the booth area. So, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm like, man, we wondering, because it's all started with a big knock on the door, like, boom, 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 boom. Like, it wasn't no shots, it was somebody banging on the wall. So, we like, this is a vacant area over here. Trashy. You know what I mean? You can get through there through the raccoons all, but it's connected to a place that's still, you know what I mean? That's how they was able to lay in there. So <clears throat> when you got back into it, did that did was that always in the back of your head while you're in the booth? I mean, it it it, it was with me for a while. But see, I didn't get back into it. Doing right music up. for real, for real. I got back into it doing shows. So when I got back into it and I said I left it alone, then I came back to it. I came back and I did a tour call before I sit down because I was going to have to go do prison time here soon. So I did uh, uh, like a 12 city tour in Louisville, Kentucky, Minnesota, you know what I mean? All the places that Big Bro put his foot down and I went and got hot there myself, you know? And I did, that's how I came back. And then I did an album with a guy in uh, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. So that's the only music I did. And I, I, I don't know, I was probably so high and just out of my brain, trying not to feel nothing. You know what I mean? Finna go to prison. What was that though? Man, like, just, what's this about to be? Like, what's... I don't have... I ain't never been in trouble. I didn't know what... To, I didn't know what to expect, like... You know what I mean? I didn't know what to expect. Just, you know, just the feeling of the unknown. You don't know what to expect, you know? I would assume you had a lot of respect already, though. You know what I'm saying? So you're going in there, not saying it's going to be sweet, but it's like. I, but that's it. I didn't know that. I'm LeVar Fletcher for real, every day of my life. Yeah. Whatever else anybody else put on me and say about me, I, I, I find out, you know what I mean? So I, I was really LeVar at that time, bro, scared. Like, dang, got to go away from my kids. I was just so, you know what I mean? But when I got there, it was that's when I was surprised with all the love and respect. When I got there, I couldn't believe it. It made it so much easier, you know what I mean? I was talking about my first day at CCA, two, three big old bags came to me. All I do is go into a pod, sit down, headphones, man, radio. Man, tuna pack, the big boy bags, you know what I mean? You got tuna packs and all that, you know, you know, you know, spend a, a dollar forty-eight, you feel me on a pack, not no mackerel, you know what I mean? But it, 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 I just couldn't believe it. Were I mean, you <clears throat> were you already briefed on how it's gonna go though? Yeah, you know, I, I got a lot of homies that told me how to how to move, you yeah. know what I mean? I got I got a, a young 30 out of Oklahoma, he he the main one. He been he, he a fed baby, you know, not no more by the grace of God. He ain't been back in a long time. He he out of there. But uh yeah, young 30 from Oklahoma, he was one of the ones I talked to most of the time because he he in and out the system. He telling me, don't do this, don't do that, go get this book, do that. I'm writing that stuff down. I I, I think I followed his to the T until I'd established my own, yeah. you know what I mean? How long did that take? To establish my yeah. own? Or to even get, I ain't gonna say get comfortable, but like, so you're in there a week, you like, okay. Bro, I weigh like four, this is this is crazy. I weigh like 420 something when I went in there. 
I mean, I, when I went in there, it was, <laughs> bro, I just came from eating what you made. You know how I go. You just come from life to CCA. That's like the county. Oh, that was terrible. But that was, man, that was a lot of, hey, I was in that cell because you in a, you, they got to make sure you straight. They put you in a cell by yourself when you first come in. You know what I mean? It might be like four or five days till they move you to where you got to go. That was just a lot of crying and praying and, man, and looking out the window and, you know what I mean? Looking out the window outside, you know, just reflecting, man. Just reflecting. Was it a relief? That you was in there too, if that makes sense. To my mama. Cause just like <clears throat> you didn't already lived your life, right? And now you like, this is the time I'm about to do. And all this shit is over with after this. When whenever I get out, this I'm done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When like, I got sentenced. It's a hard reset to my life at at this point. Was when, that I, the when I got sentenced. All up until your sentence. When I got sentenced, I finally was able to be like, dang. You know what I mean? I got sentenced. You know, I ain't wondering what's happening with my life. I know exactly how much time I got to do. You know what I mean? I ain't got to argue with these people. You know what I mean? I ain't got to do nothing else, man. I just got to ride this out. It was a big weight off, you know. I was losing my hair. I was losing my hair and my beard. Like, there was a part of my beard that would not grow. Stress would kill you for real, bro. Stop stuff from growing. And man, after I got sentenced, it slowly started coming back. Because that, that it, you know, going through the case is the, is, is, is the most stressful. So you say you was attached to moms and pops, right? Out the gate. Yeah. <clears throat> Where did the detachment start? How, how did that start? In high school. I just, I wanted the money. So I, it was just whatever for the money, even in high school. In high school, me and my me and my father, I'm sorry, Pops, if you see this, but me and my father caught 560 counts of soliciting the minors in Grain Valley and Blue Springs when, when I was a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I'm talking about, man, it started young for me, man, because I just wanted money. My dad was a hustler. My dad was a gambler, you know? He all, my dad would throw shows. My dad would try to come up, you know. He was, I, I got all my hustle from him, for real. You know what I mean? But it, but but I was willing to go the extra mile, you know what I mean? I was ready to just say, you know what I mean? But as soon as my mama started giving me a choice whether I had to go to church or not, and I started saying, no, nah, I'm going to stay home, life changed slowly. You know what I mean? So, so, where was that from? Wyandotte, Kansas. Wyandotte, Kansas is where I'm really Origi originally okay. from. And then my mama got a buyout back in the day where they give you a bunch of money to, yeah. to stop working. And she moved to Blue Springs. And then the boats came around that time. The river boats came. My dad loved to gamble. He had a problem with it. And we ended up losing our place in Blue Springs and had to move right back to the hood. Fish Street, Garfield is where I'm, I'm the, the hood. <laughs> you know what I mean? And why not? We had to move back. Stayed a couple years, couple years, couple years, right? And then my mama, my mama resilient. She get us back. You know, my mama her whole life wanted to get us out the ghetto. You know what I mean? She got us back out there. But by the time she got us back there, I had a... Small, you know, I didn't, I didn't grew up a little bit, you know, so now I'm out there living with mom. But when I, as soon as my friends get a car, we coming down here. You know what I mean? I'm taking them places, I'm taking the suburban kids, Matt Miller and all and those mm -hmm. some kids out there who got the car. I'm, I always got them in the city. Always, you know what I mean? Then I started, then we moved to, we moved to Missouri, Paseo area, you know what I mean? But this was summers. Like, I come and stay for the summer with my cousin Corey and Dion and them. You know what I mean? But originally from Wyandotte, Kansas, then Blue Springs, then Wyandotte again, then Olathe. I, I was everywhere. So where the music start? <laughs> the music started in Kansas City, Kansas, K-Town Records, Midwest Mafia. Remember Midwest Mafia back in the day? You know, 
Midwest Mafia, one of the first groups. This is 1994. This was uh, Tech Nine, uh, uh, Scarecrow, okay. I do. I, Hustle I Made either. Buck, Z Purgatory album back in the day. The black, is that a, was it a black and gray album or something? I don't mean, I think it had some color in there. It was Purgatory. But that's how far, that's 1994. Okay. And then we did a, a Midwest, I was on the Midwest Mafia album oh, twice. How did, how did that come about though? It came from really from my cousin. My cousin, she was a you know beautiful cousin, you know what I mean? All the guys liked her. She bumped into some guys who rapped. She like, man, I got a big, I got a big cousin, you know, he sing. And I think I went there on her word, you know what I mean? And then when I met him, it was the truth. And they So sold. what were you singing at prior to? Before that? Even rabbit, yeah. Was you in church singing? Not nah, you... a, a little bit of church early in life, but mostly school. Mostly high school. And like I sang the national anthem, bro, for uh for the school districts. All the volleyball games, the school district, whatever the school district had, I sang the national anthem. Um choirs, acting, bro. I did all that in school. I, I got first place in every high school. In Kansas City. So did you, you already knew you had to give? Early. And didn't tap into it, or did you tap in? Early, I did, only, but only like that though. When I, I, how old was I when I did, 1994? I was 16, 17 years old in 1994. So that's right, that's when I knew, that's when guys started being like, hey man, come to the studio, we wanna get you to do this. We wanna get you to do that. You know what I mean? Marvin Jackson, Pearl Records. All that, Montel Jones, on on, on Benton, uh, 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 what's my man Ernest Dixon? Uh-huh. He be going in Montel Jones. Yeah, we both kids. Montel Jones was when he worked with your kids. You get you musically right. Yeah. You go down there and mess with Marvin Jackson Pro Records. Ernest Dixon be walking out. This is before he was with the group, and I be walking in. Working with my Tim, working on our vocals. This is that. This is how long, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, all around sixteen is when I just was like, yeah, okay, I like this music stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, but then it left me after that album. Okay, woo, woo, you know what I mean? Next until it wasn't until twenty one. So from sixteen to twenty nine, twenty twenty one. That's when I. It was a big gap, no music. And then I did my own album called Big Boy LeVar. You know what I mean? I did that with uh, Wu Records, Tom Woosley out of Olathe. Man, you know, um, I got some dope money from my homeboy, Robert Fox, RIP, out of Kentucky. He came up and visited me and and told me and asked me when I was going to start doing some music. And I was just, I was hustling. I was hustling. I was moving hard. You know what I mean? But it was petty, you know what I mean? I ain't moving no more. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm a petty hustler. I'm letting, I'm so stupid. I'm, we let Knox come to the house where we live mm-hmm. and all that. We just stupid, right? And my boy came and said, hey man, you don't need to be doing this. You need to do music. And he gave me $3,000. And I promised him, I said, he said, man, I don't want you to go buy nothing else but do music with this. Next day, I took all that money to Tom Woosley and said, you said I could do an album? How much is it going to cost? Oh, give me $2,500. Here go 3000 I gave him the whole, all the money, did my, did my first album. So you stuck to it. What made you be like, oh, I mean, I'm really going to take all this money? And put, like you really believed in the album and in I the- believed in I believed in my music. I believe in the dream I had of doing music in my own album. That was like the biggest thing. There wasn't no streams and none of that. This is the biggest thing ever to have your own disc that- So you really up. wanted your own di- You You wanted to do music though. Oh yeah, it was in my heart. It was in my heart. And I had a roommate, uh, uh, AD. It was in his heart. So me and him got together and, and he helped me do my whole, <clears throat> excuse me, he helped me do my whole first album. You know what I mean? Like, help me write it. It was just me and AD. You know what I mean? He was my roommate, too. We lived together. My best friend at the time. You know what I mean? And we did that whole album. You know what I mean? And we put it out. And then we sold a thousand. We sold a thousand copies, like, in a month. 
at ten dollars a piece. A thousand. This is when, this is back when you could hop out with a CD and everybody stopped, like, because people really wasn't doing that. You so know did you I mean? already have a name at that time, or you just went out on a limb? Just... Uh, no, no. I, 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 I had a. At this time, I lived in Olathe. Um, but I'm an adult. No, I'm not. I never went to high school. Or, everybody thinks I grew up in Olathe. That's not true. I didn't get there till I was an adult. You know what I mean? I just moved back in with mom, who had moved to Olathe. But I, but I, I'm hanging out in the streets of Olathe, and uh, I'm selling dope. You know what I mean? I'm going to all the parties. We knocking out people. You know, we just acting a straight fool. You know, so I was popular like that with the group of guys I was with. So when I did the music, it was easy to sell the music because I was popular off of being ignorant. So no high school. High school was out of there. High school? No, I didn't. I, didn't, I was in high school. I went to an alternative school. I, I wasn't doing no music in there. I was singing talent shows. I'm and saying, so did you finish high school? Yeah, I finished high school. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. I got, a, uh, I got a diploma. Yeah, finished high school. Mama made sure that, yeah. I, and while all my friends was going to college, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go to college. I want to go. I want to get some money. All right. So where does Boy Big come in at now? Ooh, Boy Big. Let me get this story right, cause R.I.P. My bro, Daba Chief. Let me get this story right. Boy Big came, cause my name was Big Boy. Big Boy Lavar on my first album. Then I did another album, uh, I got signed to a record deal and I moved to San Diego, California. And uh, my name was Big Boy on that on that album too. Then, then I came home and did an album. And was my name Boy Big then? I don't know, bro. One of the albums, I switched it because of my bro. Big Boy, just everybody was Big Boy. Yeah. We went to Cali and Big Boy was on the, he was 400, 500, 600 pounds at the time, but he'd be on the uh, on the bulletin boards and say Big Boy real big. And we was like, we didn't want that connotation on him, you know what I mean? And uh, my bro said, nah, you, you boy big. You boy big. Boy, you big, boy big. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just, it just stuck. Like, we just going to switch that. You know what I mean? And uh, that was around the time, that was around the time I met Rich. You know what I mean? Around that time I was I was with Mr. Stinky. See, I started off in Missouri. I started off with Mr. Stinky, Javon Candy, yeah. the Vigilante. That's who I started with. You know, I started hanging out with him, started doing music with him, like all his songs, you know. This was, uh, yeah, I had two albums out. But he was doing music too. He had Armed Criminal Action out with the young fat tone yeah. and, and all all the script man classic. You know what I mean? So I'm on that wave. You know what I mean? And plus, he, you know, we, we became good friends, and uh, we did a lot. But he was with me when I signed my deal in California. He'd come out and hang out with me. You know what I mean? Because I signed it. I, I was young. Got ten thousand dollars. In a car and a, a condo, and you know what I mean, just to come out there and do an album real quick. I was so young, man. Like I wasn't even twenty one yet. How did it get out there? How did your music get out there? Singing at a wedding in Olathe. That's how I met that whole situation. I was singing at uh, Denise Bruce's wedding in Olathe, and I met Everett, which is uh, Evie, which is her bro- her cousin. And he was like. And he a hustler, young, fly hustler. You know what I mean? Getting it, getting it, getting it. You know what I mean? And he like, man, you come with me. Man, I'll give you 10K. Man, you just come out here, I'll put you up. You ain't got to worry about nothing, man. And you can bring your homies. I was like, what? I'm a kid, bro. I'm just in late to singing at my homegirl wedding because that's my dog. Man, we was out. Me and me and Sean Mac, Bay, Mac and Bone jumped right on the on the uh, on the plane. Went right to Cali and lived, boy, lived for real. Like learned a whole lot yeah. to life, you know. And then uh, I did. I was still big boy. I was still big boy then, and uh, but I was everybody. Once you leave, because you got to think. Around this time, I hadn't done. Uh, 
I hadn't done the Fat Tone records yet. I ain't, I ain't did all the rich stuff yet. I ain't did none of that. Uh, but even, but that's how me and Rich even even was getting closer because he'd be in L.A. with BMF, you know what I mean? And I'd be in San Diego with, this, with the San Diego South Cali ballers doing music. And he'd call me like, all right, come get me. And he'd be like, pull up to the Fox Hills Mall. I'd drive, me and Mike, I'd get, and then I'd tell them, hey, I, Rich just called. They all know who Rich mm. is. They love Rich and Dago. They're like, what? So I, you know, they they taking me there. I don't know how to get to Fox Hills Mall like that. So you already got a relationship at this point? You and Rich already had a relationship? Yeah, because it's so I, I gotta slow down a little bit. Cause yes, when I was when I when I but I think that was my second time back. So there was a big car accident that separated the times of my time in Cali. I first went with my two homies. We were working on an album. We got into a bad car accident where my man who signed me had to learn how to walk again. Mm-hmm. That took like eight, I want to say eight, nine months. So it was back to Kansas City, right? Oh, man, I want to, I can't say everything. But, man, I learned how to hustle and grit. My man made sure I was straight because he assigned me, but it all came to a screeching halt because of the car accident. But to keep me motivated, he kept me motivated, which changed things here. You know what I mean? So, so okay, so it's all coming to me. Yeah. So, yeah, so me, you, me, and he, that might have been out already. That might have been out already. Coalition, it might have been out already. You know what I mean? It might have been already, but it was just, I was just a singer. I was just showing up as the singer. But when I came back from Cali and had a new trade, yeah. I was no longer just the singer. You feel me? And I'm not a first cousin of Big Bro. I'm the only friend who hangs out. There's no other friends that just hang out, come to the house, meet moms. There ain't no friends doing that. First cousins, that's all that coalition was. But 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 I was just a singer pulling up, everybody loved me, you know. But when I came back with that new trade, they say, hey man, he's a little bit more than a singer. So that's when friendship started happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I could say this. I'm pulling diesels on parallel. Unloading. <laughs> I'm just being real. So so you think I'm just a singer, but hold on, that big, hold on, hold on. He got he got four or five cars of, of local Kansas City, Kansas residents making sure the whole scenario is straight. You feel me? Hold on, he's not just a singer. He's also an organizer. You know what I mean? It just changed the dynamic of the relationship. So now when I go back to, now nine months later, once my man is healing up, I'm back in Cali finishing our deal. So now I meet the relationship at home with my guys is different because they everybody saw for nine months how I was wiggling. Feel me? Yeah. So now I'm back out here, but this time I'm out here, I stay for like two years. So that's that, that was the, the now I'm picking them up at Fox Hills Mall. You feel me? Hey, that's, I'm glad you. I'm glad you're making me die because I really, you know, history. You really going back and looking at that. I'm glad you're making me because that's the timeline. That's why it was like that. So yeah, I knew him before I left, but it wasn't. It wasn't nothing yet. You know. So you wasn't fanned out to Rich. Oh yeah. Um, so before your your first song was that a- before my first song, I was fanned out. Okay. But not fanned out like that, because you can't like be that, fanned out was, like that. Uh, but he was, he was rich to fact. Like, oh, yeah, he was rich to f- rich joint. Man, you know what I'm it changed. How did that it? come about? Man, you what well, what was okay? So oh 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 I don't know if that one was first or you me and he. I never get that straight like you, me, and he. Mm-hmm. That'll yeah. work these days, baby. That was way back then. You, me, I think that was the first one. But after the first one, because I remember I'm already boy, I'm already big boy. How did it come about to where y'all linked up though? A little, uh, what's his name? Lil Troy, I Want to Be a Baller. Yeah. His concert at the National Guard Armory. I performed, and if I'm not mistaken, Rich performed. 
and I saw him in the crowd, and I walked up and handed him my first CD. And I just put it in his hand, hey, man, I love your music, man. I handed him my CD, I walked away. And I wasn't finna, you know. He has a number on it? My number was on there. But every but everybody knew that I, was, I hung out with Stinky all the time. So after me giving him the CD, Nine months later, <laughs> not not like right off or none of that. Nine months later, I come to Stinky's house where we're living, we're living together, and Stinky said, "Boy," because you know he was connected to the street. Everything went through Stinky. Stinky know everything yeah. about her, right? He like, "Boy, they say Rich looking for you." I'm like, "Yeah, right." Because hold on, what? Big Rich looking for who? You know what I mean? I'm being real, like. Boy, they say, boy, I, I, you think I'm playing. You think I'm, if you know Stinky, you get real. You think I'm playing. You think I'm playing. No, no, no. They think, hold on, hold on. He sit down, get on the phone. Hey, hey, I got him right here. I got him right here. They get on the phone. It's Big Rich. I'm like, you know, hello. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's up, Big Homie? He like, all right, Big Mark finna come through and, and pick you up. Yeah, just hopping back. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is mafioso. You know what I mean? I'm a kid. This is real. Hey, I'm like, yes, sir. You know what I mean? I got, got my stuff together. Big Mark from Tiffany Park pulled up. Yeah. R.I.P. to Big Mark. Big Mark from Tiffany Park pulled up. I jumped in the back of his green uh, blazer. I don't know what it was. You know what I mean? A little Chevy Tahoe at the time. Took me right to Rich. Took me to uh, Tenth and Chestnut. The lab or to him? No, to 10th and Chestnut, the block. Like, and that's where I knew that they, I, I didn't know. Well, I'm just getting in the car. It wasn't no session that day, but he yeah. he had he had he had idea, you know what I mean? But I was just a singer. But he knew I was hanging around Stinky. Stinky was all in all kind of stuff. So he already had this, like, I remember what he said. All right, man, we're not gonna talk about this. We're not gonna talk about that. Me and you, we're gonna talk about music. I said, yes, sir. So for the first two, three, four looks, I was just the music man. Come through the safest places possible. Make sure ain't no traffic. That's how he treated me. Straight up. I was I was not a part of what they were a part of. He didn't want me a part of what they were a part of. He wanted that completely separate. And I loved him for that. You know what I mean? But even though I end up being yeah. little bro and been in many, you know what I mean? But at the same time, at that time, he was like, nah. It wasn't until we, you know what I mean? He saw later what I was a, a, a part of, you know. But yeah, it, yeah, that was a, I was, man, bro, we're rich. Massey, you, me, and he. Man, West End Studios. No, this is before it. You can't say no, all you gotta, you gotta go on my word. When yeah. I leave here and I'll tell you who I was this week, that's all you get, yeah. you know what I mean? You ain't no proof. But man, they knew, cause when they heard that record, cause this is, this is after Factorism. You know, Factorism sold, man, 40, like 40, man, thousands of copies. You know what I mean? So that was really his catapult at the time, yeah. Factorism. This was after that. So you got him writing the prime. Sure did, and they they didn't hear no singing like, you know what I mean? Like how because I didn't come no slouch. That was Boy Big on them records. You feel so me? So did you know you was the one at that time too? Oh yeah, there was in the world or more the city. The, the city, world. man. I wasn't thinking about no world. I didn't care about no world. I cared about right here, straight up. I cared about here, man. I remember sitting back telling Stinky like, bro, I wanna. I'm gonna be that. I remember telling Steve, like, I'm gonna be that. And then asking, like, you think I can be that? He'd be like, yeah, you boy, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna be that. I said, I promise you, ain't no these niggas can't mess with me. You know what I mean? I'm coming, I'm coming. I said, I, you know what I mean? But when I got with bro, it changed everything. Changed everything. You know what I mean? Bro so talked. did you freestyle then too? Or did you write then? I wrote then. Okay. Yeah, I wrote then. Yeah, I wrote me, me and my coalitions. Grind on the river, sugar day. <laughs> Whatever I said at the time, you know what I mean. I wrote all that. <laughs> hey, yeah, but it, it it slowly left though. It slowly left. I didn't... Was it from doing so many hooks? It was just so I was constantly like... in the booth. 
it was my familiar, how you said, my familiarity, is that how you said, with with music. I just started really, I dived in. Remember, remember when we recorded and you was like, you need to do this right here. Yeah. And I was like, and I, I I didn't take your word right off. I had to listen to in my head what you said. But I was like, you're you're music, you're a music person. Yeah. You know what I mean? I that's when I dived in. Cause you gotta remember, after that came all them hooks, man. I'm talking about fat tone hooks, the walking in the rain, like ain't nobody had did it like that. Fire. You know what I mean? Nobody had did it like that. But all that came afterwards, man. And what, it was, how did that where did that come about? Fat Tone, see, Fat Tone was always my 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 younger homie. Through Stinky. See, he was really with Stinky, you know what I mean? Like I, I knew Fat Tone before he blew up. Yeah, so you this is my nigga already. This ain't this is my and, and not I really even him. my look. A nigga who I really, to be honest, I'm not gonna fake. He was a nigga I knew. A little crazy little nigga I knew. That talked crazy. He had a glove on his hand that he never took off. Cause he had a growth on his hand, and as young black men, we don't know what to do, so we just put a glove on. Every time he took that glove off, clear room, smell like mold, musk. And I, that's how I know Tone. And then out of nowhere, <laughs> I promise you, it's like ah, man, I disappeared for five, six months. Whatever I was doing, looked up Tone was the nigga. So was he rapping when you met him? Yeah. He was doing uh, all that stuff with on armed criminal action, okay. and all that you know. He but he also he was also gaining a name at that time. This was before I'm a fan. I was around during all that. The first concert they did, they did it because how would they know about G Coffee if it wasn't, you know what I mean? For 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 me and my guys, we did stuff out in Olathe. Their first concert where Fat Tone brought Killer Tay mm -hmm. was at G Coffee in Olathe. All because of how we was out there. We were throwing parties. We used to have Fat Tone and Olathe because we was out there. You know what I mean? As a young man. All of us young. You know what I mean? Me and my homies, like, no playing, no jeffing. Me and my homies, Fat Tone couldn't really fight. He had no squabbly wobs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Didn't have that. There's so many times me and my guys had to fight people for Fat Tom, where we, because we see him get, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't have state, you know what I mean? His stabilization game wasn't right, you know what I mean? Man, as a young man, he was my dog. But he kind of became not my dog as he was growing up doing all the things to my dogs. You feel me? He started robbing all my friends. You know what I mean? Like guys wild got love and respect for and dealt with. He came, man. It took Chuck Little John to get me to come do all those hooks, gangstified, walking in the rain, jocking you. It took Chuck Little John to get me to do that. Cause Chuck was my dog. I wasn't gonna go mess with Tone at this time in his life because he was too hot. It was too much stuff going on. But Chuck called me who I had love for and have love for to this day. And it was like, I'm here. And he got 500 a hook. How many he want? He want four of them. So he got $2,000 right now. Boy, it's Chuck. Pew! <clears throat> he had just robbed all my niggas, though. So I wasn't trying to be all friendly. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's and, tough. Yeah. That's a tough position. Hey, but, but man, I'm broken. I'm young and I'm building my name and the whole town and the world is starting to get on him. You know what I mean? From, from, from I'm a vet. I'm a vet. All that screaming. At the time, I thought that, I thought that was the wackest song in the world because it was just screaming, but he blew up off of it. You know what I mean? Then, you know, Killer Tay, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't into scream rap, you know what I mean? But that's what they were doing. But yeah, man, like, it took Chuck, to, man, he, he got 2,000, yeah, he got the 2,000 right here. Bro, I'm here. I really love, me and Chuck got a relationship. I know I'm safe. I know it ain't no back door. I know it ain't nothing popping. All they want is some music and they got the bread. If it didn't have no bread, you would have never got Walking in the Rain, Gangsta Five. You would have never got those because I wasn't showing up. It was too, it was too, only Chuck Little John. So everybody, if you like that song, y'all better thank Chuck Little John because he made it happen. Gangsta Five might have been my favorite song in Kansas City. Come on, favorite man. hook from York for sure. Bro, can you? I did Jockin' Me, 
gangstified, walking in the rain, and another song on another album that didn't come all in one in one session. So were the verses already there, or you did the hooks and then he came through and blazed them? I want to say his some in some of the songs, because I did them with him. He was there at Chapman Studios. I want to say that he 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 was there was a couple of them where he had the verses, and then there was a couple of them that didn't where he went in there and did it. Yeah. So how was you feeling once you got out? Like, just like you said, it was your niggas that this shit was happening to. So now, not that you in it, but it kind of puts you in the middle of it. Now well, let me let me let me let me tell you something. Another man's beef ain't my beef, right? That's how you look at it. Because we're not a gang. He didn't get over on the gang members of mine. He got on, on guys who I love and respect. You know what I mean? So it's kind of different than if he got over on my brother. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. It's, it's just a little different. I wasn't messing with him because that's foul, bro. You know what I mean? What did you ever catch any flat from doing the hook stuff? Well, I got one story. I'm not going to put his name out here. But I got one homie who went to the studio with me one time. Fat Tone Studio. I tell him on the way, hey, I don't care what nobody says. Don't do any dealings with anybody over here. Bro, you with me. Just come with me. Sit down. Smoke your little blunt. Drink your drink. Hang out with me. Don't interact and try to do no business with no one there. He didn't listen to me. While I'm in the booth... He's so excited that it's Fat Tone. He, you know, this is after walking in the rain. He's, he's the, he's the, the, the you know what I mean? The shiznit right now. What I, while I'm in the booth, what did my homie do? He did business with him. Right? So now I come out the booth, Tone, and my homie gone. Right? I'm like, I told this man. So I drove though. We didn't come together. I drove. So I'm done. He ain't here. I'm calling his phone. He ain't answering. I get my car. I, I go home. I'm, I'm, so as, I, as I'm leaving, he called my phone like, man, I'm good. Woo -woo. I'm just with Tone. I'm like, I, but I can't address it. Yeah. He with Tone. But I'm not finna cuss him out. And, you know. But I told him. He knows what I told him. I said, oh, yeah. Okay. Be careful. Man, uh, the next morning, niggas at my apartment. Hey, man, your boy got me. Same dude I just said, don't do no business. So I, so it's like, I'm, I'm giving you that example to let you know I couldn't really, be, oh, yeah, yeah, they're my guys, but you don't listen. That was that's that situation, you know what I mean? Like, so I really wasn't, I didn't have, man, that money. Man, I didn't have no, I didn't have no plex about it. Everybody's their own man, you know what I mean? So, and, and now, but now, but now, Tone's calling me without Chuck around. But every time the money's right there, all off of the relationship. Respect. Respect, every time. Looney, me and Looney, Cor me and Looney Corleone song in him. All the, any other song after that, and I did a lot, money was right there. That's one thing, because he knew. He knew I would, you know. And also he knew I was I was down with MFR. You know what I mean? MFR was becoming my family. So it's also like, he kind of knew that too. You know what I mean? Like he can't just come and get me for everything. You know what I mean? Cause my, I had a loyalty, you know what I mean? Like, so it was like that too. It was like that too. And I remember everybody talking about fat tone better than rich. I just remember it, it just was a big old thing. And it kind of, even though they never were affected by that, neither one of them. But you step outside and it's it's the, everybody, it's the, you know what I mean? It's everybody else that's that's comparing. So did they have a, a mutual respect? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure, but it was a, it wasn't all the way mutual because rich the factor is everybody's, G, OG, you know what I mean? Everybody has that countenance with him at that time and doing music and if you're around. So it wasn't all the way like equally yoked. You know what I mean? It was like the young man, the young, young nigga doing his thing. You know what I mean? He doing his thing, can't take, but yet he's still, <laughs> he's, still he's still a little Tony though. You know what I mean? That type of, 
that type of vibe. Oh, that's tough. So was music, so music became your life then? Yeah. Music, music became So how did you eventually start living? Were you able to, to ever live life? Like go to the movies, uh, go hoop, go, you know what I'm saying? Or was it just straight money and music? I want to say that I, I, I like to do fun stuff, but everything was money and music. Everything. Because I also I'm also living in the underworld too. Because music ain't taking care of everything. But it's taking care of a lot. But I want, I'm greedy. What the music's doing ain't enough. You know what I mean? So I'm in the I'm in the streets doing everything I can that I felt comfortable doing, you know what I mean? And so I'm in the streets too. So I really never had no chance to to chill and live. Like for real. It's sad too, because when you think about it, like I like it was just always on the go. One thing that used to break my heart, like when I used to think about how I treated my mama. My mama would call and I play this perfect little dude, you know what I mean? My mama lived right in right in Lenox or something, you know what I mean? Johnson County. I don't go by the house. I don't call her. You know what I mean? That's the type of that guy I was. I was so just everything else meant so much more. You know what I mean? Just a rotten individual now that in hindsight, rotten. You know what I mean? Because everything, I was turned out by everything else and it took precedence over everything, even relationships, you know? Did, she, did y'all eventually have that conversation afterwards? Oh, yeah. Because as soon as I got in trouble, who, even though I, I didn't, even though our relationship wasn't a recipro- reciprocating one where it was back and forth, as soon as I got in trouble, who had my back? My mama. She showed up and showed out. You know what I mean? Just the, my whole bid with my children, with me. Just she showed up and showed out and showed me. You know, I, and I remember just crying like, Mom, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? We, me and my mom, we talk. We, we, man, right now, that's my dog. You know what I mean? That's my best friend still right now, you know? Could you see everything crumbling? Yeah. Uh-huh. I could definitely see everything crumbling. Cause after Maestro died, I didn't know I didn't know what was going on. After Maestro died, because you gotta remember right before Maestro died, I just do a concert of a lifetime for Kansas City in uh in Lawrence, Kansas. I brought Joe Blow when he was still cool with everybody. Uh Aunt Pacino, Rich the Factor, the MFR boys, uh, Lil Rue, uh, just, just, it, it was a underground. So I was living, I made all, it was my show, you know what I mean? It, man, I made money. It was m- me and my partner, T.Y., you know what I mean? Made money. It was just, everything was, just, it was going so good. Right then, I was doing an album with Joe Blow. He was the hottest name on the streets, you know, at the time. This is when everybody still liked him, you know what I mean? And uh, I was, I did a whole project with him, and man, I was shooting videos. I had a, I had a little bag, you know what I mean? Putting money behind my visions and putting out albums, and, and, and man, it came to a screeching halt. Screeching. <laughs> you hear me? Came to my mama's house out there in jail, man. Knocked her, tried to knock her door down, come get me. God, I remember that was my last address I ever had as a, as a you know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't been legitimate in no way, you know? Okay, and I'm 35 years old, and that's where they go. They don't go to my own house over here. Nah, they go to my mama's house. You know what I mean? And this is the first implement of anything that... This is this is before Maestro left. This 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 was in December of twelve. Look how it went for me, bro. December of twelve. This is indicted. This is where I'm indicted. I go to jail. Turn myself in on Christmas, the day after Christmas. Turn myself in. 
I get out on my birthday on my signature bond because I've never been in trouble before. So on January 4th, I get out. 26 later, 26 days later, they killed Maestro and almost killed me. You know what I mean? That's how that went for me. So your brain going everywhere. Man. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm holding on by a shoestring, man, taking anything I can take to not feel it. Percocet, this is Percocets. Yeah, I'm taking, smoking K2. I'm popping Zannies. I'm, anything I can do to not feel it. Kalatapins. I'm doing all kind of stuff. Drinking lean by the gallons. You know what I mean? So did you know what they had you on? Or was this like, what the? F At first... I was the weed man. This is just so I can say this. I was the weed man at that time. I'm talking about by myself, no one knew my business. Not doing it with no buddies or nothing, all by myself. I thought they kicked my mama's house for that. You know, I'm doing I'm messing with the mail and doing all this extra stuff. I'm thinking, okay, it's, I, 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 I come on, <laughs> it's mine. You know what I mean? But when they, when they, when they, but when they, when I talked to them, when they said what it is, I was on a meth conspiracy. That's when my heart hit my stomach. Like, hold on, I don't deal with that. How am I on there? I don't even deal with meth. I'm a weed man. How am I on this? How the hell? But then I started seeing how I was on there. Same time they kicking my door down or trying to come get me, they coming to get my bro. You know, they, they, they do, they, you know, they was involved in some major stuff, man. You know what I mean? Not me though. Yeah. So they can literally come grab you just off of a conversation or anything. Man, them people Ain't got nothing to do with you. You have to sit down. Man, them people, are, they're called translators. I don't know what they're called exactly, exactly. But those people translating, they'll say, uh, I got studio time at three. I got a 10-hour block. They'll say, man, that, that means he's uh, picking up three kilos and he wants to make sure they all get distributed by 10 o'clock that night. They'll say that. Some white man or black man in a suit somewhere, a decode your conversation and say what it is and then put it on the paper and say, charging. But they don't have to have no proof or nothing. All they need is two witnesses to agree. That's it. And, and the two witnesses that were coming after me were friends of my brothers who I didn't even know. I never dealt with, never said hello. Maybe went like this. Hey, how y'all doing? You know what I mean? So they must have got them too. Oh yeah, they was locked up too. And then they just that was it was twenty eight man conspiracy. Twenty eight people was involved in that, and I was the lowest man on the totem pole. And you like, nigga, I got something else going, and y'all ain't even getting me on this. They never said nothing. Well, it didn't come out that it was weed conversations until my sentencing. My sentencing, that's when he's talking about weed right here. He's not talking about, you guys are trying to give him over 200, 200 grams, which is a whole eight or nine years, when y'all got conversations in here saying that this is drugs when this is not drugs. This is clearly studio time at three, a 10 hour block. Look who this man is. This is Boy Big. He's been a part of 96% of the albums done locally. He's on at least a hook, uh, 96%. He's done this, he's done that. If this man says 10 o'clock, I mean, three o'clock, 10 hours, that's the man. But, but I told you that the judge already had struck weight down on his own. So once he did that, my lawyer was felt okay to talk about his objections. You know what I mean? So, and, and, and once he, all the objections, once the objections got under a certain amount of weight, that's when my time went from eight to nine years to five to seven, which I was cool with that. Why was I cool with that? Cause I'd already had digested 10 years. The whole thing, I was out on bond, man, for nine months of that bond, they said 10 years and we we took it. We, 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 we accepted it. I was reading the Source magazine one day and I seen Blue Da Vinci. Blue Da Vinci had just went down with BMF and he's on this thing and he's on this article and he's talking about a safety valve, right? 
I'm reading it like, oh man, man, Pooh Da Vinci out already? Man, safety valve? Man, I call my lawyer like, hey, I need to come down there and talk to you. I rush down to downtown, talk to my lawyer. I take him, I take him this magazine and said, I want this. You see him? I know he didn't have to talk to nobody. I know he didn't have to tell on nobody. I want what he got. He's in the same boat. I, I, very little role. Woo, woo. The lawyer said, Mr. Fletcher, you told me that to never bring your name up when it comes to debriefing or talking to anyone. I said, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. He didn't do that. No, 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 he, he didn't do that. Because I, I, all the admiration I have for that through my bro, uh, he said, no, Mr. Fletcher, no. He, he took a safety valve, which means he had to sit down and they had to accept the information that he gave. Man, I started crying. I ain't gonna lie. I just drove down here because I, I thought I, you had a play. Yeah, I thought I had a play. I digested ten years. You want to? You want anything less than that? Because like, hold on. You know I me. Mean? I thought I had a play, and I did not because I I was not doing what Blue Da Vinci did. I already said that out the gate. You know what I mean to the lawyer? Long time ago, nine months ago. So when I came to him with this, he was like. Uh, so you're going back on what you said? I'm like, nah, hell no, I'm not. But he he didn't do that. He's like, yes, he did. Man, I said, damn. I was so heartbroken, bro. I left out of there with <laughs> big tears, back to 10. You know what I mean? And then because they really didn't have nothing on me, they end up at the very last minute offering me an open plea. But that open plea, like I was said, was for, for, for uh, you know, eight or nine years. So, so arguing that weight down on my sentencing is what got me seventy months. So where was you at in your head after that? Like I'm gonna just walk this down, and I'm, yeah, I, I'm gonna walk it down, and I'm gonna fall in love with Christ. To be honest, because I was already on that. I just, I, I really wanted to get to know Him, you know. I wanted him to know me. I knew he knew me, but I wanted him to know. You know what I mean? I just, I fell in love with Christ, bro. Like literally, bro. Like I was in charge. I was part of the Christian faculty. You know what I mean? In the joint, I'm throwing Chris, uh, Christian specialty meals, and man, I was fellowship. So, with what made you lean to that though? Because you could have went in there still how you was in the street. What made you? Because I was already on it. I was already sparking. It was already a spark from when Maestro died right before I went away. It was already a spark. So I was, I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not the type. If I get a spark, I'm diving into it. You know what I mean? That's just how I am. I try to go head first into if the spark is there enough. You know what I mean? And it was. That's what made me lean on that. And do you feel like he was getting favor as well? Yeah, man. Yes. You know, you know, when you first get to the feds, you might not get a TV spot. This is big now. It might not be big to nobody else. In the TV room, there's rows of chairs. Niggas have been there for years. It's their chair. Man, when I first got there, I got me a chair in the TV room. I thought, hey, that's an accomplishment. You feel me? I'm, I'm, And it ain't too close where you got to do like that. They had me perfect. It was just love all the way, though. It was love all the way. Everybody coming in. I'm talking about guys coming in from, from Louisville. Guys coming in from Newburgh. Guys coming in from Minnesota. They all knew us, man. So did you have to run around with your PSI out or what? Like how to how to? No, 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 not 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 in the, not, in the, not in my designated spot. You know what I mean? Because I went to a soft camp. You know what I mean? But in the beginning, I did on my own when they told me not to. I wanted just everybody to read. And not not only was I doing it just to show people I'm I'm not a, you know I'm not telling nobody, but it was more to get an understanding because I've never been in trouble before. So some of these words on this paper, I don't even know what they saying. And you niggas been in and out of here your whole life. Yeah, so y'all know this shit front to back. Man, so I need help. That was my main thing. I needed help understanding what they was telling me I did. You know what I mean? I'm talking about the my guy who I took a plea. My the head, my my little bro, the head guy on, on, on a deal, 
He told me to take a plea. Get out the way. Because he, at first he told me, fight this. And I told him, hell no. Nah. How I'm going to fight this and it's your people getting up here telling on you and then they're going to tell on me. I'm not going to fight these people. I'm scared to death. Man, but they ain't got you. You ain't did nothing. They got me, but they ain't got you. You ain't did nothing. He got tears in his eyes. You ain't supposed to be. I'm like, nigga, that ain't, that ain't no tears now. I'm here. I ain't staying. I ain't finished. I'm not fighting them so they can give me all day. Yo, your people, this is your people. I used to see with you with these people every day, this girl and this guy. Every day, these are your best friends. You love these people. They tell it on you. They offered you 18. They tell it on you. So you know they tell it on me. It says it right here. They tried to black out the name, but hold it up to the light. Oh, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yo, people, tell it on me. I never, I don't even know them. I'm not fighting this because they're going to get up there and tell it. And you shouldn't fight it neither. Take the 18. Take it. Because your people going to get up I don't care. I want him to get up and look me in my eye. He a, he a gangster. I ain't going to take nothing from him. He's really one of them. And what and what they do? They got up there, looked him right. They didn't look him in his eyes. They looked him right here and said, yeah, he's right. You feel me? He pointed right to him. He got 50. They offered him 18. They gave him 50 for taking it to trial. Yeah. So that's when you like, you know what? I'm out of this shit. What did that do for you and like even just friends and just keeping around company, period? Or you more like, I done seen this, so I ain't trusting nothing. Yeah, I turned into that. I turned, when I first got there, my heart was it was hard, it was it was hard and I was pissed. I was pissed. How am I here? You know what I mean? That was my, like, that was my, when I first got to CCA is what I'm talking about. I was just so mad. You know what I mean? Trying to figure out where they at. <laughs> the people telling on me, because they in a pod around here. That's what people do. You find mm -hmm. out where the people that told on you and you see if you can make some stuff happen to them. You know what I mean? But I, I getting in that word, it took all that away. To where even when I got home, I made a post. I said, hey man, if you told on me, I love you. I'm not, because you don't want nobody thinking you mad. Mm -hmm. So they can try to hit you in the head before you hit them in theirs. Uh-uh. I said, I love you. You were influential in changing my life. I have no hard feelings. I know exactly who you are. Y'all know who I am. But know this in my heart. I don't, this is a post now, because I, I don't know where they are. I don't know whose cousins is looking. I ain't mad. Thank you. I'm praying for y'all, you know what I mean? I am out, you know what I mean? I ain't mad at nobody, man. You feel me? Yeah. And that's why you left Boy Big behind and, 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 and ran with Fletcher. Yeah, like, so that came later, but I left the Boy Big mentality and spirit. And, the, you know, I left that behind. I, I, I left being a whoremonger alone. I left being haughty and you know, you can't smoke with me, nigga, unless you got money on me, nigga. Don't eat that guy. I ain't him no more. You know what I mean? I, you know, I wasn't spoken at that time, but I'm just saying, like, a lot of things changed. You know, like, when I got home, I had to learn how to run the ride the bus. Never rode the bus in my life, but I was excited about riding the bus. I was excited about learning how to ride the bus. I was a Pizza Hut delivery man when I got home. I'm pulling up to Pizza Huts in Shawnee Mission. I mean, to the house with pizzas and, hey, Boy Biggs at the door. What? He got the pizzas. <laughs> Bro, I'm talking about pulling up with the pizzas, giving them the pizzas. They giving me a $1.70 tip and me crying all the way to the car. Asking God, like, hey, you really, you really, you really do me. <laughs> you give me, you give me in my gut, Lord. You know what I mean? Because I'm really pissed. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I'm really mad as hell, y'all. Just man, and hold on. Then you ask to take a picture, and 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 my my behind gonna say yes every time. 
<laughs> you know how many times they call boy B pizza? <laughs> hey, you talk about how God will take you from what oh, you stripping. think is high and bring stripping. you low. Man, he brought me low, but but I had to take it. I had to take. I remember. I remember walking into a, a little office with cubicles with pizza. Man, I got ten of them pizza party. Man, <laughs> hey, hey, and they laughing at me. Little little white girls laughing like, "Aren't you boy big?" I'm like, "Yeah, I am." Give me a dip, baby. You know what I mean? But for real, God had me in that walk. Because mm. I, I wasn't going back to singing no hooks for no dope, or about no dope. I wasn't going back to singing no hooks about glorifying marijuana smoke. Marijuana smoke robbed me of motivation for a lot of time, you know what I mean? I'm never going to glorify nothing to go against him. So I'm going I'm to I'm serve these pizzas, and I'm going to do everything I can because I'm not going back on my word. But when I got home, I had 100,000 waiting on me. 100,000 is only 100 hooks, 1,000 a hook. With Rich the Factor sitting next to you saying, Jer, Jer, he's home. That was, I denied all that. Mm. Rich picked me up from my job. I worked as a, I worked in a kitchen downtown, dirty as hell. He picked me up, offered me his Durango and said, come on. I said, no, I can't. I got to do this. And then I hopped on the one-on-one that was taking me, the one-on-one bus that takes you from downtown all the way to Leavenworth uh, halfway house to Walmart. And I got on that bus and he called me. He was laughing and I was laughing, but it wasn't a laughing of nigga. It was an admiration. I never heard admiration in his voice for me. I'm a little homie. It was an admiration laugh like, boy, okay, you serious? The man just offered me his Durango and said, come on. A hundred hooks, a thousand hooks. That's a hundred thousand. I said, no, man. Man, I said, no. He was my biggest no. He was my, that was the test. If I could say no to Rich the Factor to doing a hook and going back into that life, then I can tell Nick Ben Dope no. I can, I'm only doing songs like this, Nick Ben Dope. I'm on whoever else. You know what I mean? I, if I could tell him no and say I, I left it alone because that was my biggest one. All in, legally, all I had to do was go stand next to him and sing a hook and say, Cavi, dope. <laughs> and I'm back. No smut on his name. Stood up. We, we know about all, you know what I mean? I'm up. But I'm being obedient because I made a promise and that was a big one. You know what I mean? That was a big one. Uh, highs and lows of everything. You've seen it. You, you, what advice would you give anybody? My honest advice to anybody is to find out who God is now. I didn't find out really who he was until I was 35. You know what I mean? I lost a lot of homies between the time I was young and 35 who never got to know God. So in my brain, I'm like, dang, where are they at? You know what I mean? Where are they going? Even though the word says, if you're apart from God, where you're going, I kind of still want to be ignorant and say where they at. You know what I mean? But to know that it took me so long to get with God, man, I used to be scared of death. Like, you know, fearful of, you know, that's why you're paranoid. That's why you, you fix to shoot somebody so fast because you ain't trying to die. Right? I used to just be scared of death. You know what I mean? I'm not scared of death no more, man, because my soul is right. So, and it didn't happen until I got a relationship with God. So my biggest advice to anybody, man, no matter where you are in life, no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what, man, get to know God through his son, Yahshua. His son has to be involved. You know what I mean? Get to know his son, man. You get a relationship with his son, a person. And a relationship means get into the word of God, reading it, Asking for understanding. Have you another book? Because you might need to look up something. This is the searching you need to do to really get to know him. Man, once you get to know him, life ain't easy. Life ain't sweet, sweet cream and, 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 and cupcakes. But man, it's easier to like navigate and, and to hear him and 
and to move accordingly, man. You know, no matter what you're doing in life, no matter what you're doing, you gotta remember. So all them people that talk in the Bible, they was the worst people, killers, man. King David killed a, a killed a nigga just to get his wife. Get in that word, word of God, man. Figure out what's who God is. You think you gotta be perfect? Oh, oh, you gonna wait till you clean before you go to church? Or you tripping? Ain't nobody clean. So come as you are. Ain't nobody. Y'all think boy big sitting here super clean, man? I'm dirtiest, the, the, the dirtiest man. You feel me? It ain't about that. So my biggest advice is get to know God, man, because, man, life is short. And to be apart from him during death is, ooh, you don't want that. You know what I mean? So that's my biggest thing, bro.